ADOS is everywhere. Cut the check. See, this is why <clears throat> I'm really all for the Democrats and I'm not optimistic going into 2020 as an American descendant of slavery. Um, come across this article today on the Hill and the headline reads that Dems charge ahead on immigration. <clears throat> what else is new? It seems like the Democrats are obsessed with uh, courting the Hispanic vote. The uh, immigration issue is uh, definitely one that they are ready to deal with and they are dealing with. Uh, so let's see here. Hispanic Democrats are charging ahead with plans to move a comprehensive immigration reform bill this year, bolstered by recently secured support from some of the party's top brass. Leaders of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus are drafting a measure that some Democratic leaders say they are ready to bring to the floor after the chamber tackles legislation that would both create a path to citizenship for so-called DREAMers under the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals Program, DACA, and strengthen protections for Temporary Protected Status, or TPS, beneficiaries. We need to move forward first on the DACA and the TPS. People who have been here making America better, creating jobs, House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer said this month during the Democrats' retreat in Northern Virginia. And then we need to move very quickly onto comprehensive immigration reform. So we have leaders of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus, the CHC, uh, drafting a measure uh, that Democrats are saying they're ready to bring to the floor. So we have the CHC, the Congressional Hispanic Caucus uh, working on behalf of their constituents. Um, politically speaking, it, it seems as if the Congressional Hispanic Caucus is strictly dealing with Hispanic issues, among them uh, apparently the immigration issue. Uh, and they're actually drafting measures to bring to the floor on behalf of their Hispanic constituents. And I really wish the same could be said of the CBC. That would be the Congressional Black Caucus. However, I don't see them drafting any measures or bringing any bills to the floor that would benefit their constituents, black people, specifically ADOS, American Descendants of Slaves. And we have House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer, Democrat out of Maryland who's never seen a pro-immigration bill that he didn't like. And he is hell-bent on moving first on DACA and the TPS. And these are reasons why I'm not optimistic because I don't see articles of this nature uh, highlighting the CBC. Whenever I see the CBC in an article lately, it seems as if it has something to do with immigration or it has something to do with getting Trump. Steny Hoyer. I guess he'd be Nancy Pelosi's uh, right hand man, so to speak. Let's take a look here. 
as I said, uh, Stanley Hoyer never seen a pro-immigration bill that he did not like. And he's riding shotgun to House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. And, um, <clears throat> right. And as far as immigration, uh, Stanley Hoyer, uh, so far in 2019, he voted in favor of the omnibus spending bill. That would be H.J. Resolution 31 to increase H-2B visas. Um, Steny Hoyer voted in favor of the bill. The bill allows for the Secretary of Homeland Security uh, allows for the the Secretary of Homeland Security to increase the number of H-2B guest worker visas issued in fiscal year 2019. In 2018, he co-sponsored HR 6135, uh, the Keep Families Together Act, uh, which basically weakens enforcement, uh, interior enforcement and increases in, uh, refugee fraud. Uh, H.R. 6135, introduced by Representative Gerald Nadler, Democrat out of New York. Uh, The legislation would severely limit the ability of Customs and Border Protection to detain family units who cross the border illegally. Uh, Prohibits the protection of asylum seekers for illegal entry. Excuse me. Prohibits the, uh, the prosecution of asylum seekers for illegal entry until after their asylum claims have been decided and it also increases instances of asylum fraud by limiting the feds ability to detain and remove asylum seekers Uh, he also co-sponsored HR 6 in 2019 the American Dream and Promise Act uh, which is to grant amnesty to illegal aliens and TPS residents Uh, H.R. 6, introduced by Rep. Lucille Roybal Allard, Democrat out of California. The legislation would grant amnesty to approximately 32 million illegal aliens who claim that they came to the United States prior to the age of 18 and meet certain requirements. The legislation would also issue green cards to approximately 430,000 foreign citizens who have received Uh, temporary protected status most TPS residents or most TPS recipients were in the United States illegally prior to receiving the designation 32 million illegal aliens uh, he's he's in favor of granting amnesty to I don't remember um, ADOS ever having amnesty even after we were supposedly freed uh, with the Emancipation Proclamation. Um, we've never received amnesty. We've never received asylum, sanctuary, solace, or any type of security or protected status. Yet I see all of these things being laid out for illegal aliens. And this is the reason why I am very pessimistic moving into 2020. The article continues whether the comprehensive package ends up getting a floor vote is uncertain especially heading into a crucial 2020 election cycle when Democratic leaders may want to avoid an issue that's likely to divide the diverse caucus. In addition, the legislation would face long odds in the Republican-controlled Senate. But the CHC Immigration and Border Issues Task Force, wow, the CHC has an Immigration and Border Issues Task Force within the CHC, which is led by Rep. Linda Sanchez, Democrat out of California, uh, is also a former CHC chairwoman. Wow. 
So the former chairwoman Linda Sanchez, uh, Linda Sanchez leads up the Immigration and Borders Issues Task Force, which is an entity of the CHC. And they are actually putting together a comprehensive hey, bill is everywhere. to Cut be the passed check. on through the House, or hopefully to be passed on through the House. We're essentially starting from scratch, said Sanchez, dismissing the idea that a comprehensive package needs to follow the framework of a failed 2013 bill that passed what at the time was a Democratic-controlled Senate, but never got a vote in the GOP-led House. Because we have so many people to work with, it's an ongoing process and we think it's better to take our time and do this the right way, said Sanchez. Adding that the CHC is seeking input from the Congressional Black Caucus, the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus, yes, they have one as well, and the House Judiciary and Homeland Security Committees. Legislation addressing DACA and TPS has already been introduced in the House and is awaiting action in the Judiciary Committee. Some CHC leaders are warning that there could be dire consequences for the party if House Democrats don't have a comprehensive immigration bill to show Hispanic voters in November 2020. So they're flexing their muscle here. The CHC leaders are warning the Democrats that say, hey, if you don't have something to bring to the table as it relates to comprehensive immigration reform, um, then there could be dire consequences. And, you know, I feel like, you know, ADOS is uh, it's on time, but this push for tang- tangibles is, is a little late. I feel like if we would have got on this in 2016, 2015, uh, going into that election with Trump and Hillary, I feel like we would have had a lot more leverage. I mean, I still think we have uh, a bit of leverage since they are so hell bent. Um, Democrats are so hell bent on defeating Trump. I think we can use that to our advantage. However, I'm still pessimistic as to how uh, responsive they'll be to our demands. Um, but you see here, and I, I just want to, you know, put this out there. Uh, you know, we're citizens. ADOS are citizens. Uh, we're fighting for reparative justice, a, a justice claim that has been long denied um, and often put off and kicked down the road. Um, the can has often been kicked down the road. Um, it's not that we're seeking handouts. Um, we're actually seeking, uh, as I said, restorative, reparative justice uh, for centuries of slavery, shadow slavery for uh, over 100 years of um, all sorts of abuse, political abuse, physical and social violence, um, convict leasing, peonage, um, black laws, uh, redlining, Jim Crow, lynchings, fire bombings. I mean, a, a complete and total uh, job of degrading an entire people for centuries and the claim has gone o- o- ignored for uh, over 100 years but yet we see here that our Hispanic counterparts are actually flexing their muscles hard for illegals and they want 32 million to be granted amnesty and another 400 to 500,000 to be granted uh, work visas and things of that nature. 32 million, I'm still trying to get over that number. That's a massive amount of people um, that are in our country illegally. And, you know, reports say that it's 10 to 12 million, um, but I think estimates I saw in a report uh, so at the high end, it's 30 million. Uh, but a more palatable estimation would be maybe 16 or 18 to 20 million uh, illegal immigrants from our southern border. So, again, they're flexing their muscle. They said they're going to be dire consequences for the party. 2020 if they don't put up 
uh, moving ahead. When immigration comes up, we expect Democrats to be there because we cannot be second class citizens, said Rep. Adriano Espilat, Espilat, Democrat New York, the CHC whip. Wow. I wish our whip, the Democratic whip, Jim Clyburn spoke like that on behalf of black citizens and American descendants of slaves. He'd be a hero. Because I could, let me replace that word immigration. When reparations comes up, we expect Democrats to be there because we cannot be, or we can no longer be second class citizens, said Jim Clyburn. Not The group's sense of urgency is driven in part by President Trump's incendiary rhetoric on immigration, but also by what they view as inaction by Democrats, including former President Obama. And they won't tell you a lot of Hispanics did vote for Trump, but you don't see them receiving any heat for that. Lots of immigrants voted for Trump. I was talking to a little Middle Eastern guy uh, shortly after Trump was elected and he said Trump was his man because Trump was going to be good for business and for the economy like Bill Clinton said it's the economy stupid so if going into 2020 um, with the economy the way it is Trump is almost assured a second term the Democrats are scared so they may try to impeach him now collusion didn't work so now they're going to try What is it? Obstruction? We'll see how far they get with that. But this is just enough to keep the the party faithful, um, hopeful enough to keep trailing behind them and and eating eating up this garbage that they're spewing. So, hey, collusion didn't work, but hey, now we're going to impeach them where they were just saying a month ago, "Uh, we're not going to be looking for impeachment. Collusion fell apart. Like Van Jones, their own guy, told him uh, two years ago that this uh, Russia collusion is a big nothing burger with no cheese. And here they are also um, basically lambasting President Obama, something that we should have did before he left office. We should have publicly denounced Obama for his inaction on behalf of ADOS. We really should have did it in 2011 and denied him a second term in 2012. But moving into 2016, we should have definitely just distanced ourselves from him and we should have let him know, like, hey, like, your your presidency wasn't it for us. Matter of fact, most of us uh, have been left worse off uh, as a result uh, of your inaction uh, on our behalf. Obama had to address it by executive order because when he had the opportunity early on in his administration, he chose not to do anything. Far too long, the immigration issue has been put in the background. That's how I feel about reparations. For far longer, reparations has been put into the background. Uh, Yes, moving on early in his first term, Obama focused heavily on health care reform allowing Republican House majorities in later years to pass on taking up bipartisan efforts at immigration reform. Speaking personally, I do not think that we erred in not picking up immigration when we had control of both legislative branches. I do think that we erred in not picking up immigration when we had control of both legislative branches. I think it should have been a top priority, said Sanchez. It wasn't, and we've been grappling with the fallout ever since. When Democrats took back the House this year under Speaker Nancy Pelosi and Hoyer, the same leaders who supported Obama's legislative agenda from 2009 to 2011, leaders made a pledge to tackle immigration reform amid a growing crisis on the border. And Hoyer blames the situation at the border at present on the 
the failure of Congress to adopt comprehensive immigration reform in 2013. So when you can't kick it down the road, you blame it on uh, what happened back in 2013 or what didn't happen. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. While the Senate passed a bill with broad bipartisan support uh, that year, then Speaker John Bonner, or Boehner, how do you have, uh, refused to take get up in the House. Democrats are encouraged by recent comments from Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell who expressed an interest in moving on a comprehensive reform bill as an antidote to the border crisis, and Pelosi seized on reports that Senate action is a possibility. We all know we need to secure the border, she said this month at the party's retreat. We don't need a lecture or tantrums from the president on that score. But we do want to work together for comprehensive immigration reform, and I am pleased to see it reported that leader Mitch McConnell is ready to talk about that because we have a symptom at the border a symptom we have a symptom at the border and we have a, a full-blown epidemic uh, within our border 32 million that's all i'm gonna say chc chairman joaquin castro democrat out of texas said that at the very least a bill endorsed by his group should be able to make it through the house as a point for negotiations with the senate I would hope that Mitch McConnell is sincere in his offer to take up comprehensive immigration reform, said Castro. Democratic leaders appear keen to have a homegrown proposal to run on in 2020, particularly as a way to counter Trump next year, when he is all but certain to make immigration a centerpiece of his re-election campaign. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm just letting it be known that, um, you know, me personally, I'm not feeling optimistic moving into 2020. Um, I am feeling resolute. I'm sticking to my guns and, you know, uh, past the point of frustration um, to the point where I'm just, you know, ready to walk away if, if I have to. I have one foot out the door. I'm still a registered Democrat, but if things don't go uh, according to a, a a script that is palatable, then, you know, I will be um, ripping that card up and registering as an independent. I've been saying I was going to do that for the last several years to the point that I thought I did, uh, but I checked and I'm still a registered Democrat, so... 2020 is going to be the litmus test if things don't go a way that I can um, say makes sense for me to move forward as a registered Democrat then I'll be ripping that card up I mean we can't keep playing this game the way we're playing it we can't keep backing the, 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 the Democrats 85% 90% you know we need to be rocking with a 60-40 split at any given election season. That way, we have leverage. We can tip the balance in favor either way. And they need our votes. And if we give them away for free again, I'm not only do I'm not only through with the Democrats, but I'm gonna be through with a lot of you black people out here. And that goes for people that I know personally, people in my family, friends. Like, we cannot continue to do this. I mean, these Democrats out here fighting tooth and nail for illegal aliens. People say, how can human beings be illegal? My people have been illegal for 400 years. So, you know, that kind of falls on deaf ears for somebody who snuck into the country illegally. I have very little sympathy for you. Especially when you're coming in here Stepping on my toes. Stepping on my kids' toes. Then we got a problem. So listen up, people. You know. Don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't already. 
drop down in the comment section. Let me know how you feel. And um, again, this is Bill Money with Dirty Laundry Media. Signing off.